But I will help introduce the uh, hacker to Japanese people yes. by this YouTube. So <laughs> that'd be awesome. Okay. Yeah. Yes, yes. English, business, and entrepreneurship. Mm -hmm. It's that important. We teach economics in the business and entrepreneurship department along with business classes. And we have many activities, including an incubator for our students to actually start their own companies. We received a charitable gift for the purpose of giving the money to our students in the form of grants to start their own companies oh, and kind of cool. learn how to do that while they're here at school and in our high school incubator. The big program that we're just going to announce one week from today is one of our young alums became very, very successful and he's making a $10 million endowment to the school, mostly to help pay for financial aid for students who can't afford to come here. But a per certain part of that endowment, which spends money off every year, will be used to create a Harker Venture Investment Pool and that our students will work with the leading entrepreneurs and VCs, venture capitalists, in the Harker community to analyze alumni founded companies and and actually make capital early stage capital investment in alumni founded companies so it's like this community of entrepreneurs venture investment professionals that that will be helping each other uh, source deals know what's going on and the students will have a big important role where they will be creating a quarterly newsletter that they send out to all the venture professionals and entrepreneurs that are here in the Harker community, alumni, alumni, parents, current parents, and students, mm -hmm. that will basically uh, explain what our Harker alumni are doing, what kind of companies are they founding, what problems are they trying to solve, uh, where they're at in the staging and uh, what stage in the development of their company are they. And so it's kind of, it will be a great place for our you know, angel investors, our, our venture capitalists to begin to source deals because Harker will co-invest with the real venture. We won't be making million dollar investment. We'll be making very small investments, but we will be able to introduce this alumni founded company to a very powerful network of, of angel investors and venture professionals to be able to help support our alumni who are starting their company. So it's a, it's very interesting mm -hmm. for us. So, yeah, so uh, I teach here in the Upper School Business and Entrepreneurship Department. We've got a number of courses that we offer, ranging from uh, the ninth grade kind of entry principles course, all the way up to a number of post AP uh, college level courses in economics, as well as in entrepreneurship. Um, and those are courses designed for students that want to launch a new business. Uh, so they're provided both funding, uh, mentorship, curriculum to help them launch the business. And then if they graduate that course, they can take a separate uh, course to scale out the business and really focus on fulfillment and uh, growing the customer base. So yeah, we designed this room so that the students can write on the walls and the teachers can write on the walls. <laughs> One of the most unique features of the Harker School is the level of individualization and customization that we are offering to our students. Um, the kind of courses, like for instance, there's very little, how are you doing? Very little students take the exact same courses. There's so many different courses to choose from and different levels of those courses that it's, it's, it's probably one of the most unique features of Harker. This is our robotics laboratory. Mm -hmm. 
the student, uh, students come in and build their robots here. At, and by the way, the students run this program. They have, uh, you know, they, it's like a startup company, actually. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There's a student that's the CEO, and then they manage all the different departments, electrical engineering, mechanical engineering, and so on and so forth. Does Hacker focus on arts? Uh, uh, everything. We, we everything. Have everything. So it's all everything we do Science. is we try like, to strive to be the very best in the country, and we actually are uh, very most accomplished. Oh, okay. So you'll see where all the equipment is. There's an an, uh, an orchestra pit. So there's a hydraulic lift that takes this down, and our orchestra will be able to play for mm. for the plays. And then the students will run all the lights and the sound and the smoke and bring down the sets and, and all the control rooms here. So it's a beautiful, beautiful, beautiful theater. I love it. <laughs> A lot of people donate money to Harker. Well, we're a non-profit school. So there are school, some schools are for-profit, owned by a particular person or company, and they need to make money on their investment. Okay. Harker's non-profit. Okay. So there's, the school makes no money. All the money that we get from tuition and fees and then contributions, we spend mm -hmm. on the children. There's nobody making money. Organizational active study and what? Uh, so organizational skills, time management, uh, time, time management, management. Okay, okay, okay. and active study methods. Oh, okay, okay, okay. So how to study? You know how to how to prepare, how to organize. And that so, that three points is important here. Yeah. If this is in the middle school, this is when they develop those skills, so they can manage their schedules, a busy schedule. They okay. might have so many different things to do. They have to keep themselves organized and. Honestly, this is like one of the most important aspects of the middle school experience is the, the academic counselors um, really help students, certainly with their academic help, but there's so much in the middle school that they have to go through. And like in the, in the elementary school, the lower school, there are many, many, many safety nets for the students. The teachers are checking, there are systems in place to make sure you don't lose things or you, you'd have your homework done on time and so on and so forth. Hello. Hi, Hello. that's one of our counselors right now. Nice to meet you. <laughs> hey, 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 fantastic. You have visitors from Japan today. Oh, awesome. We have an incredibly outstanding uh, academic counselors, and they're also, I think they're licensed marriage, family, child, child counselors as well, and so on and so forth. Mm -hmm. So it's, it's really a phenomenal, important part of the program. Mm -hmm. And I think it's, it's really sets Harker apart from so many of the other schools, the emphasis and the professionalism that we have in this particular department. The, they had classrooms in many different buildings, and the students were not happy because they want to see their friends. So we built this building where all the students are together in this building. It's a, uh, the main okay. academic. Oh, thank you. Oh, thank you. Can I get the point that, uh, like, what uh, academic advisor doing here? So academic advisor means like when they have like advisory time. So it's almost like think of as similar to homeroom, right? So rather than going all the classes you have advisory time to talk about like if you have some difficulties with say uh, classes okay or maybe some difficulties with friends mm -hmm. and then they could discuss and find a solution ah, okay like cannot catch it up or is a class yeah or like... I'm having a hard time ah, okay, yeah. okay. So can, can you give us like strategy or tips mm -hmm. can you help me okay yeah. okay so that's what the advisor is oh, there for. okay yeah. Yeah, I think that those kind of safe net or like, like mm -hmm. place to uh, like yeah, place to go receive and help. Exactly, like, exactly. Is very important yeah. for children. Yep. A big step is that they actually tell themselves like, I need help. Ah, okay. Right. <laughs> and then if they do that, then we're offering help to them. Yeah. Okay. There's some people who cannot say I want help. It, it's hard. Yeah. Sometimes okay. kids, right? And that's where the teachers come in. 
because uh. they have to kind of sense that it's like oh he or she is kind of struggling mm-hmm. so even though they don't speak up it's like hey i could help you let uh, me get okay. somebody else to help you what's troubling you right mm-hmm. and that's kind of the role of our teachers too they have okay. to sense those things. that's why like uh teachers office is in the classroom mm-hmm. and like be be part of the class exactly. every every yeah. time every time the administration encourages the teachers to take time to go to conferences mm-hmm. workshops or visit other schools mm-hmm. why to learn okay yeah to always constantly learn right learn okay. about different types of teaching or different types of strategies mm-hmm. so uh, i used to go at least once a year to different conferences all oh, the time okay yeah yeah i think it's important to We call that professional development. Mm -hmm. So, if I could prepare my kids to understand and problem solve on their own, be independent, not just academically but socially, Mm -hmm. then we did our job. Okay. You know, that's what education is. By the way, I want to ask like about the like admission of the uh, the university Mm -hmm. in the United States. Yeah. So. I think like admission is in the United States is more like uh, like complicated compared to Japan's admission because Japanese uh, university only uh, only focus on the score mm. of the test. Yeah. But American university uh, focus <laughs> not only score but Everything also like yeah. extracurricular yeah. activities yeah. Exactly. like essays yeah. or like like they try to like understand the whole people exactly. not only. The score, yeah. So because I, they can. For example, I know pre-COVID, it was like 2019. Mm-hmm. You know, like for UC system, you know, they could only take let's just say 10,000, but they got over 100,000 applicants. Mm-hmm. So how do you decide? And out of those 100,000, let's just say 50,000, they're all 4.0 average or higher. Mm-hmm. How are you going to decide? Because they're all smart academically. <laughs> yeah. Right. Yeah. You can't just base on t- test score. So now the next thing is. What have they done so far? Have they volunteered? Have they helped in the community? Did they actually start up a business of nonprofit organization? These are the things they look for like a whole student. That's where they start. Okay, they're academically smart, but not only that, but they have other goals. That's how they select, right? Okay. Because just because you're smart and say you have 4.4 grade point average, you have a high SAT score, it's not automatic anymore. Mm, right? Yeah. Because there are a lot of kids same doing the same thing. <laughs> so what separate? Well, then you look at other stuff. So for example, once the kids do like nonprofit and they actually, you know, go to third world countries, let's just say Africa, and mm-hmm. help build houses and stuff like that, it's like that's the student we want in our university. Why? Mm, okay. Because that student can make a difference. It's okay. not just academic. They could make a difference in community and the world, right? Mm. And that's what they look at. Okay. And sometimes we tell the kids, it's education sometimes is not all in. Meaning, it's important, but it's not, don't be discouraged if you don't get into your university or mm. college that you want. Yeah. It's okay, right? It's okay, it's like, oh, I want to go to Stanford. I didn't get in Stanford and they're all depressed. Like, don't worry about it. If you need to go to junior college, do that. Or go to other university and transfer to Stanford. But you got to just work at it. These are the things that you need to work on, right? So we, we have to encourage, like, don't be upset just because you didn't make it into that particular college mm. or university, right? But, you know, set your dreams high and you just keep work at it, right? Mm, just work yeah. at it. Not to be stick to the uh, ac- acceptance or like yeah rejection and exactly like and that's part of life and learning yeah yeah move forward yeah move it. forward right okay. and it's okay to be rejected or fail we said there's nothing wrong with failure you learn from it right you you get up you're falling down get up brush yourself off and let's move forward okay you know and and to be honest if you do that you you become more resilient right. You could handle the stress. You could handle the failure.
from Japan. I'm just showing them our lower school computer lab. <laughs> I'm so fine. Over there, if you notice, we got the Lego robotics. So. We also build our own robots now. Yeah, 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 I know. And with our first graders, uh, basically they build their own robot, robot car from mm. scratch. So they oh. learn to breadboard and we give them microcontrollers and motors. Okay. Uh, and uh, they're able to plug in sensors. And because they we teach them how to breadboard, it opens yeah. up a whole new... Yeah. Do you think it's important to teach robots uh, from young age, like in lower school? Yeah. Uh, basically, the idea is that they shouldn't be afraid of hardware, right? Mm -hmm. Any type of hardware. Uh, and the, the idea that you can code hardware, not just something that comes up on your computer screen, can also be new. Um, and what I found is for students who might not find game development as interesting or you know animation as interesting, this is a real life thing that you create, right? Mm -hmm. It moves around, it can collect data for you, it can transmit that data, it can wirelessly communicate, and you're building it completely from like off-the-shelf materials that you got from Amazon. It's not plug-and-play, so it feels like the real thing. Right. So there's a different level of understanding when you have that physicalness of it versus just programming. Mm, and then building okay. a circuit. So, you know, you're trying to figure out how do I put a sensor into this circuit uh, and how do I get the sensor to collect the data that I need? How do I get it to relay that data? And then how do I get it to make decisions based on it? And by the end, by the time we're done, the kids are like racing their robots. What? They're, they they race their the robot cars that they oh. build by the end of it. So, so yeah, it's, it's, it's a lot of fun teaching. Right now they're lunch recess, so they're playing. And then, as you can see over there, we have what we call PE class. It's free play because it's recess. Hi, my name is Joe Chang. I'm the ELI director, as well as uh, I oversee the summer camp on the Bucknell campus. My message to all the young students around the world is follow your passion. When you're passionate about anything, you need to follow it, dream it, pursue it. And hopefully with the guidance and support from your parents and teachers, you will be very successful. Don't worry about failure, just get up, brush off, and continue on with your passion. And if you do that, you will have great success in life. Okay. And for parents and like teachers, educators, they need to support that and guide students along the way. Mm -hmm. And that's what I feel as an educator, that's our job. Okay. We should help support our kids find their way. But on the other hand, I think it's very hard to like uh, find what you're passionate about. True. How, how do you think about it? That, so in order to find your passion, that's where education comes in handy. Mm -hmm. You try different things at school. Okay. You try different things with friends, family, join clubs, join different type of society, right? Okay. And you find it's like, oh, I like doing that, mm -hmm. right? Or I'm interested in that. You can just push. Yeah. Okay. So that's where you need to start finding what you want to do. Okay, so like the school is the place to find the, what you're passionate about and yes. to and pursue it. To pursue it. Yes. Okay. Yes. Great. Definitely. Thank yeah. you.